Right, well, No Holdings is China's biggest private wealth management company and was a first such a firm which listed on the New York Stock Exchange, now managing around $80 billion, serving some 150,000 high net worth individuals and 450,000 more who are merely quote unquote affluent. Uh, the group's president is Kenny Lam and he's with me here in Hong Kong. Kenny, great to see you. I see you. Um, you're growing pretty, pretty fast here. and. But tell us about what worries you currently, because you've got all these high net worth individuals, you've got this clampdown coming on asset managers and wealth management products. How much of a threat is that to your business and how much of a threat is it to the market generally? I think um, you'll be surprised. I sleep better now after the super regulation consultative paper that came out. I think uh, what happened in the last two years was a tremendous growth in the market and you have a lot of players coming in with questionable practices, products that may, may or may not default. And what this regulation or the, the super regulation does is actually is to make sure that the risk profiles of the clients are actually properly vetted, make sure that the products that came out are actually done well. All of that is actually good for the market. There's going to be a short term downturn because it's a, a clamp down and cleansing of the market. But what it does is actually it helps um, the market to grow in a healthy way. Uh, Kenny, the point being also here that We've got a lot of people who are invested in these wealth management products. You know, they may well lose their money. Yeah, well, uh, we've seen that. We've seen that actually starting uh, mid-16, where with the stock market being volatile, the clients have started investing in many of these, um, our, our fellow players uh, and their products. And what you see is they're starting to see p potential defaults in the products. And they want to make sure the clients are done well, so there's implicit guarantee. And that's why the government came out and said there should be no implicit guarantee. There will be short-term impact on some of the clients in the market. So the idea is short-term pain for long-term gain? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But we've been here before. But there'll be many people out there who will be thinking, well, we've had the government come in and clamp down on these products before, but it's only been half-hearted and they've really gone through it. So let's, stay, let's stick around and create new ones. I think what's different this time is actually across regulators. So it's not just you know, CSRC, CSRC, CIRC, CPRC. Basically across the regulators are coming up with a super regulation saying that there needs to be a unified change to the wealth management market and I think that's a good thing. Okay, there's also noises emanating from China, from Beijing, that they could be a clamp down on wealth uh, fund, man or fund managers investing in Hong Kong. Now, you've got, I think, 150 or 120 uh, asset managers here. Now, yeah. what is the danger of that actually sucking the liquidity out of the system? Well, I think um, overall, if you look at the long-term um, economy, you're seeing the capital outflow uh, continuing. And what it means is that there's a globalization of the currency, there's globalization of, of the Chinese economy. There's a short-term control because there needs to be some kind of balance. But overall, the long-term, I think it's still going to be a uh, long-term open up of, opening up of the market. Right. Right. Let's move to other dangers and other headwinds that we might see in the future. And one of those which is also perennially uh, raises that is debt and yeah. corporate debt yeah. as well. And we've seen how yields have been spiking up for corporate bonds in China. Yeah. Does this worry you? Um, short term, uh, yes a bit, but long term, no. Now, what it means is short term, there needs to be some restructuring of the, of the economy and the core companies in the economy. There is still some overcapacity in the economy. And so that's why we see this spike in the corporate debt. Long term, I think this is necessary. Um, in some sectors, it's still growing quite quickly. In quite a few sectors in, in China, there's still need, needs to But do you see bankruptcies? I can't say where it's going to happen. No, I'm not asking right? that. But I think I, I do feel like there could be some bankruptcies. Then that brings you on to my next question. Does that mean the death of the so-called Beijing put? Uh, it's difficult to say, but what, what I can see, though, is that the, the government and the... The moral hazard that could be created if they are propped up is essentially what I'm getting at, yeah. Yeah, well, what I'm trying to say is that the government is actually quite determined this time to make sure the economy is restructured well. I think what we see in the party congress coming out is that the next five years is all about making sure that we have a strong basis for growth. And therefore, if you say we have to restructure companies, let's do that. If you say we have to make some companies bankrupt and make sure they're healthy, let's do that. Um, so institutional money goes into the bond market and we have equities being driven by retail primarily, don't we? Yeah. You see that changing? Uh, slowly but surely. 
um, the retail market would have to be supported by institutions. And we're starting to see global institutions spiking up the exposure to China. That's a good thing. I think the bond market is still quite small. So there needs to be a lot more support, not only domestic institutions, but global institutions for, as well. Um, question is, you know, we keep on saying the same thing. It's, it's going to be jammed tomorrow, but we're going to take the pain now. But how long? I mean, what, what, I, it, we've got a system in Japan, uh, sorry, Japan, China, which is evolving. It is becoming more and more open. When do we have capital controls removed? When, when, when do we see more flexibility for the currency and uh, make it more market orientated? All these things. It's a great way to put it. I would have to say, if you ask me the same question a year and a half ago. You said jam tomorrow. As well. I would say jam. Now I'm actually quite a lot more confident. The reason why is I think the government has a lot more control and a lot more levers now to do something. And, and the, two, the, the super regulation two weeks ago is one example, which is you rarely see cross-regulated consultative paper. And if it does the regulation this way, it really pushes the market in a, in a very um, fast-paced manner. Uh, Kenny, just one, one quick one, and very, very quickly, how would you describe the Chinese economy at the moment, very quickly? I would say it's a slower growth, but healthier growth type of economy. I'm going to just ask you why I asked you, well, I'm going to ask you a question as to why I asked you that question after, after this break. Kenny Lam says that he is uh, the uh, president of NOAA Group. He'll be uh, looking at what's happening with the Chinese economy and uh, beyond. <laughs>